Hey guys, it's me, Teddy. And I'm Aisha. Today's topic is about globalization. Globalization. What is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Who benefits? Who loses? Hi again. So I'm going to tell you all about the great things about globalization and who benefits from it. But first, let's define globalization. Globalization is the integration of the world's different cultures, ideas, and economic resources. It's basically the reason why you run into McDonald's and other places other than America, like India. Workers, investors, and consumers gain more by being part of the international market, and ideas are spread through cultural diffusion, or the sharing of knowledge and tradition between cultures, which helps speed up innovation. Some more awesome things about globalization. Businesses can communicate efficiently and effectively with their partners, suppliers, and customers, and better manage their supplies and inventories. Without globalization, Susie wouldn't have been able to manage her lemonade business as well as she did, considering that most, if not all of the tech she used was most likely made in China. Local producers can sell their products with ease and speed in both their home country and in distant markets, meaning that Susie can sell her lemonade in Japan just as easily as she can here in America. Thanks to globalization, financial aid and support are available to developing countries. The three main organizations that decide how to aid these countries are the United Nations, who decide which countries to need aid, the World Bank, who funds the building of infrastructure in these countries, and the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, who offers economic advice to countries. Basically, globalization leads to higher standards of living across the entire world. So how come lots of people don't like it? Well, there's a lot of criticism about its goals and what it really does. I'll cover some of the largest critiques about globalization. There is more concern over money and mass marketing than what the public wants. When genetically modified crops came about, many fear that they would be forced onto co consumers because they're easier to maintain and grow than organic crops, but without actually knowing the full effects of the crop itself. Some say that international programs like the IMF are used as tools for global economic domination. The US, for example, once threatened high tariffs on banana exports not from Chiquita, which is a large American international company, to preserve the money coming in from other countries. Globalization also severely damages the environment. Countries exploit natural resources to promote economic growth, but this, in turn, causes pollution, destroys landscapes, endangers wild species, and drains our natural resources. There's also critics who say that there aren't enough policies regulating many issues, like oil spill cleanups and fishing quotas. Cultural traditions are also lost when globalization occurs, from when land is taken over by larger companies, especially in poorer countries with more lenient environmental laws, to when languages and traditions disappear because they can't compete with the rest of the world. Finally, a very large complaint has been the fact that local companies just can't compete with large, multinational corporations. These companies can manufacture everything cheaper and faster, so small businesses go out of business because they are unable to compete in the market. So let's review everything about globalization. It's just the combining of the world's countries and their economies. It's not inherently good or bad, but it's up to you to decide if you agree or disagree with it. So the good things about globalization include higher consumption for less effort, the ability for producers and consumers to provide and access a wide variety of goods and services, faster business communication and management, the ability for local producers to sell both locally and internationally, and financial aid for developing countries. However, some of the downfalls of globalization are that it becomes about the money, not the customer. Countries use globalization organizations to gain global economic dominance. It hurts the environment a lot. Cultural traditions die out because of it, and local producers are pushed out of the market because they can't compete with international corporations. So who benefits from globalization? Well, everybody is supposed to, from the consumer able to get more goods to the producer able to reach more customers and gain more profit, and even in countries so that they can pull out of poverty and contribute to a better, more diverse global economy. But there are still a lot of people who lose from globalization. Take the 20.6% of people around the world, that's about 1.22 billion people who still suffer from poverty. While there have undoubtedly been many programs put in by the United Nations, the IMF, and the World Bank to try to get them out, they're still in poverty. That's a lot of people. Many small businesses lose as well because they can't compete with large international companies, and many cultural traditions and customs become lost, maybe because they're too inefficient or outdated. But while there's a lot of positives and negatives, it's still up to you to decide whether or not you think globalization is a good or bad thing. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching about globalization! globalization. Using Powtoon.